Hi! Today I want to show you how you can memory map a PCI bar in a Linux driver. In my previous videos we have created a PCI device emulated by QMU and wrote a simple driver for it. This PCI device offers 4 kilobytes of RAM behind bar 1. The goal of today's video is to access bar 1 from user space and we can achieve this by implementing the memory map callback in our PCI driver. So let's start. Let me navigate where into my git repository in which I have the source code for my driver for my echo device. And I've already added a little bit to save us a little bit of time. So in order to implement the memory map callback we need a device file and in the driver we need to allocate a device number. So here I have defined the device number I want to use. I want to use major device number 64 and the device name which will show up in slash proc slash devices will be echo device. Down here I have created a yeah, device struct which will contain all the variables we need for, to manage the device and currently I only have one variable which is a pointer to my PCI device. And I have declared a global variable for the struct too. Then we have our file operations we want to um, we want to use for our device number, but currently the struct is empty, and in here we will implement the memory map. And here in the probe function, I will allocate my device number with the device name and the file operations. And in case it doesn't work, I will return with an error code, which is down here. And in the remove function, or we are also unregistering or freeing our device number. And that's basically it. Okay, so now the next step is let's implement the memory map callback. Therefore, I will need a new function from the type static int. I will call it echo memory map. And the arguments are as follow. The first one is um, from the, a pointer from the type struct file and I will name it file as well. And the second argument is also a pointer from the type struct virtual memory area struct and I will call it VMA. And in case everything worked fine, we will return zero here. So here in this function, so this here we are getting a pointer from user space, um, which is yeah displayed or yeah, which is within this virtual memory area. And now we have to change settings in our MMU so that the pointer from user space now points to our bar one. So let's do this magic. So this virtual memory area has a field called FM page offset. And the page offset is a physical address, so not a virtual address, and this is a physical address the pointer will point to. And this must be page aligned. A page in Linux is typically 4 kilobytes in size. I've made a more detailed video about memory map. I will put a link into the description there. I'm describing a little bit more what's, what's the heck with page offsets and page numbers and what pages in Linux are in general. So if you're interested in this, check it out. So now we need the physical address of bar 1 and we can get this with the function PCI resource start, which will give us the start address of a PCI bar and we want the PCI bar from the device struct pdef. We have initialized this in the probe function and I want to have the start of bar 1. And then we need to shift this by page shift because we need the page number here. Okay, and now we have to reconfigure our MMU so in the future the pointer from user space will directly point to the start of bar 1. So how can we do this? Well, therefore we will need the function io remap page frame number range and we want to remap our virtual memory area. Then we need to specify the start address. We need to specify the page offset or this is the page number but I don't know why it's called pg off here. Then we will need the length which we want to remap and we will get this by 
dividing the end of our virtual memory area from the start. And here I made a typo, yeah, this should be it. And the last argument are the permissions with which we will access this memory area. And this is behind fm page prot. Okay, and in case this value is greater than zero, an error occurred. So let me copy the this print here from the kernel's lock. And let's return minus status here. Okay, now we have declared, defined our echo memory map function. Now we have to assign it in here in the file operations. And I can do this with yeah, this line here. Okay, so that should be it. Let me try to compile this module. So our target architecture is ARM and we're cross compiling it with our cross compiler here. So let's run this and let's see if I made some mistakes. Yes, a typo in here. Echo mmap. Okay, let me try to compile it again. Cool, now our module is compiled and now we need to write the user space application to call the memory map callback function. I will call this bar one test.c and first I need some headers. So let's include standard int, standard lib, maybe we will need string as well. Uni Unix standard is also always good and I will need function control for opening and I will need sys man.h for the memory map function. So this uh, program will have some arguments attached to it. And yeah, we will talk about the arguments later. But first let's implement the memory map callback. So here I will declare a pointer I will name bar1 because this pointer will really point to bar1. And if we are reading from the pointer or writing to it, we will accessing bar1 of our PCI device. So the first thing we have to do is we have to open the device file, which is connected to our device number. And I will store the device file location in the first argument I pass to this function. And I will open this with read and write permissions. Then let's do a quick check if opening the file was successful. If not, I will print out an error here and I will return with minus one. And in case it was successful, at the end I have to close my function. And now let's do the memory mapping. So therefore I will need the memory map function. The first argument I will set to zero. This is an address, so in case our memory map is not page aligned, we could specify an offset or something like that in here. Then the second argument is the size we want to memory map and we want to memory map four kilobytes, with, which is the size of bar one. Then the next argument are the permissions. So here I want to read from my memory and I want to write to my memory. With map shared, I say I don't want a copy of the memory. No, I really want a pointer to the memory so I can manipulate it. Then I need to pass in my file descriptor and an address, which is zero in this case, and that's basically it. And of course, if I have mapped something at the end, I have to unmap it with m unmap. As arguments, I have to pass given my pointer and also, yeah, and also um, the size. Okay, cool. And now if I'm doing something like this, I would write this value to bar one. And to make this function a little bit more interesting, I will always pass four or five arguments with the function. So the first argument is always the device file I'm going to open. The second argument is the access width. So if I want to do an 8-bit access, a 16-bit access, a 32-bit access, or a 64-bit access. The next argument is the, is the offset within the page. So we have a 4-kilobyte page, so we can have an offset up to 4, 
1059, sorry, 95, yeah. And, and if there is a fourth argument, this is a value which should be written to it. So up here, let me add some code. So if the argument count is, is not equal to four and the argument count is not equal to five, then we can't use it and I will print out a message usage of the function. So the first um, argument here is the device file name. Then we have the access width. Then we have the offset in the bar. And as an optional argument, we will have a value we want to write to it. Okay, and I forgot here. The, so this argument zero always contains the name and the path to um, the executable. And I will return zero in this case. Okay, and then I will need some variables. So I need um, the access width and I need um, the offset, which is always passed. And then I will need a 64t variable with a value I want to write. Yeah, here I forgot to, break, to close the brace, so, okay. Good, then in here, in case, um, the number of arguments is equal to four. We will do a read and else if the number of arguments is equal to five, then we will do a write. Okay, but in both ways we have uh, width and I will convert argument um, two to a long by using string to long. And of course I will do the same for the offset, but here I have to take the third argument. Okay, so now depending on our width, so in case width is eight, we are doing an eight byte access. So I will need a pointer from the type u int eight t pointer, and it will point to u int um, eight t pointer bar one plus offset. And then with printf, we can just print out the value in here. And here we are just reading from the pointer and this will access bar one plus offset. Okay, so we need this four more times or three more times. So in case the access width is 16, we need a 16 byte pointer and the rest is the same. Then if it's 32, we have a 32 bit pointer. And in case it's 64, we need a 64 pointer and I will change this to long, long here to print it out correctly. Okay, and in case we have a write, it's very similar, but instead of printing out something, what we're doing now is, so first we need to convert our value. So value is string to long, long. Um, arg v, so this is the fourth argument we are converting it and down here we will write it. The indie costing will be done by, yep, I don't have to cost this directly because this will be done automatically. But here, up here, I will cost it to in 64 t okay. So let me copy these four lines here and let's do the same thing for 16-bit 16 16-bit uh, 16 accesses. 32-bit accesses and last but not least 64-bit accesses. Okay, so this should be our user space application. So let me try to compile it. So once again, I need my cross compiler. The input file is borrow one test and I want to write this file to my root file system and the file name should be bar one test. Okay, I've made some mistakes in here. Print of usage. Mm. Maybe the line break here is not optimal. <laughs> yeah, this should be it. Whoa. 
Ah, yeah, I yeah, know. <laughs> the output file is here. Okay, now it worked. And now let me also copy my um, compiled kernel object. I have to add this in the root file system as well. And then let's jump into the root file system and pack it. Okay, and now we can fire up QMU and test everything. So let me start QMU. Um, I will use the virtual 2.10 machine. This is my kernel. This is my um, root file system I want to use. And I want to add a PCI echo device here. So let's boot. Done. Now let me um, load my kernel module. Done. And now if I take a look in or if I search for echo in or echo device in proc devices, we have an entry here and we are, have allocated major number 64 for our echo device driver. Okay, so now the next I have to create a device file which will be connected to this device number. So I will create the device for dev echo dev. And here it's a character device, major number 64, minor number 0. Done. And now if I run my bar one test without arguments, I will get the usage. So I have to specify the device file, the access with the offset and an optional value. And you, we can see here at bar 0 offset or bar 1 offset 0, we have written this value. So let's try if we can read out this value. So the file is def echo def. The access width is 32 bytes and the offset is 0. Hey, so we can see a read was started to our echo device and we can read out this exact value. Cool. So let's try to write something. And maybe even try a 64 bit access. So let's write to 0, 4, 4, 4, 4, 3, 3, 3, 3, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so this is split into two 32-bit accesses, and now let's try to read it back. Hey, it's working. Let's also try 8-bit accesses, maybe at offset 4. So this should be 3-3. Free free. Yes. And if we try a 60-bit access at address 4, so 16-bit access, we can read 3-3-3-3. Free 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 free. So cool, this is working. Cool. So that's how to memory map a PCI bar in a Linux driver and how you can access it from user space. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymycoffee.com slash for Linux. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.